Baru berfikir nak sambung master atau PhD. Oh, Alhamdulillah. Dah terlepas sudah PhD dia. Dah terlepas tu maksudnya dah habis dia PhD dia tunggu. Uh, maybe dia main dengan uh, anak uh, apa? Anak murid dia ke? Okay. Uh, Suka baik dia ke? Kau cakap bahasa utara faham ke semua? Kalau saya tak cakap bahasa utara, saya akan cuba untuk bercakap dia dengan bahasa baku. Okey. Alright. Tajuk yang telah diberikan kepada saya ialah kajian kualitatif dan analisis data dengan FSCI 8. Pernah dengar FSCI 8? Apa yang pernah dengar pasal FSCI 8? Siapa boleh angkat tangan dan jawab kepada saya apa yang dia pernah dengar pasal FSCI 8? Ni angkat tangan. Okey. Boleh jawab apa dia? What do you know about FSCI? Tak payah bangun pun tak apa. Kuat-kuat jawab tu. Boleh pakai mikrofon. Okey, setakat yang saya tahu lah, Dr. Eh. FSTI ni adalah uh, satu dan kita boleh uh, dia boleh print hanya sama itu saja. Dan, dan kita boleh coding-coding kan. Uh, itu yang kita tahu lah. Dan kita memudahkan untuk kita tak boleh nak baca semua. Alhamdulillah, saya tak ingin pergi seramah ni hari. Saya nak balik dah rasa Sebab betul semuanya dan layak untuk dapat hadiah Boleh tak terus kita bagi hadiah Kepada yang menjawab sahaja kita tadi Okey, alright Selalunya bila saya tanya Apa yang kalian tahu mengenai FSCI Ramai yang akan menjawab ini ialah uh, Analisis uh, kualitatif Software untuk kualitatif Software untuk temubual dan sebagainya jadi, saya pun nak tanya lah kat sini, berapa ramai di kalangan kita, dalam kajian kita, ataupun yang baru nak daftar, nak buat kajian kualitatif? Atau ada pembunuh kualitatif dalam riset? Dia boleh angkat tangan sikit tak saya nak tengok? Wow, bestnya. Okey. Ada tak yang tidak ada langsung pembunuh kualitatif? Mungkin dia buat kualiti, ataupun dia tak mix pun dengan kuali. Boleh angkat tangan? Ni yang ramai-ramai tak angkat tangan ni, macam tu? Belum decide? Nak buat kuat dia atau kuat kuat dia lagi okay. Alright. Sekiranya kita yang berada dekat sini Ada komponen kualitatif dalam ras- ka- kajian masing-masing Sila bayangkan Sebab saya duduk explain lagi nah. Sila bayangkan data-data kualitatif kita Iaitu pembuatan ke, pemahatian ke, dokumen ke dan sebagainya Bagi yang tidak ada komponen kualitatif Tapi mereka ada komponen kualitatif sahaja Sila bayangkan Literature masing-masing Okay. Literature, why? Because literature is in textual format Kan tak dengar saya dekat luar tawar kan kalau cakap mungkin Okay It's in textual format and considered as part of quantitative data Okay, kerana dia berada dalam bentuk yang kualitatif uh, uh, Bentuk textual Walaupun kajian kita, purely quantitative Data analysis, okay Dah balik daripada data analysis, dah balik kolak data Buat data analysis, baru kita akan buat laporan. Oleh itu saya nak kita semua imagine eh. Sekarang ni apa situasi dia? Situasi yang saya nak ialah kita bagi yang buat kuali eh, what type of data that you have? Adakah kita ada data berbentuk temu buah? 1, 2, 3, 4. Temu buah pertama, transkrip pertama, transkrip kedua, ketiga dan keempat atau pemer, pemerhatian, data pemerhatian, data temu buah, data video Ataupun data dokumen Atau Bagi yang tidak mempunyai data kualitatif Can you please imagine this Masuk online database Dapat empat dokumen Yang sangat-sangat relevan untuk tujuan kita Satu, dua, tiga, empat Boleh bayangkan? Okey Setelah dah bayangkan jadi Apakah benda pertama yang kita akan buat? Kita akan Kalau literature kita akan baca Kalau data tem, uh, apa, kualitatif pun kita akan baca So, baca macam mana? Kita akan cuba untuk melihat poin-poin penting macam kau kena sebut tadi kan? Apa poin penting yang ada dekat dalam dokumen ni? Contoh, oh ni sepatutnya ada highlighting kalau biru, tu ada kat situ. Okay. Highlighting ni, saya akan pakai highlighter untuk nak highlight poin penting. Sebab saya rasa bahagian ni bercakap mengenai definisi. Saya akan cari pula dokumen lain. Ya, ada juga definisi. Definisi, definisi dan definisi komputer. Okay, sebab kajian kita mengenai komputer, that article talks about komputer. Ataupun that interview participant talks about komputer. That video shows a section that talks about komputer. 
Okay? Tapi bahagian ini tidak ada yang mendefine komputer. Tak ada masalah, betul? Sebab tidak semestinya poin yang kita nak tu ada dalam kesemua artikel yang kita jumpa atau kesemua data yang kita ada. Alright. So far boleh follow lagi example ni sangat senang kan? Alright. Dan kita pun proceed dah buat benda yang sama untuk konsep-konsep lain pula. Contoh, ini ialah definisi. Ini ialah problem. Saya tak sure dia keluarkan dah apa kat sini. Sepatutnya dia berwarna merah. Okay, kat sini dia tak pernah nampak merah sangat. Okay. This is merah, merah, merah. Why? Because this article talks about definition, problem and suggestion. Definition, problem and way forward. Contohnya dah kan? So, dia tak semuanya poin yang ada. Okay. Pengalaman saya. Saya banyak membaca. Ada orang background law kat sini? Anyone with law background? Only one person? Two persons? Setuju tak kalau saya cakap lawyer ni dia suka membaca? Walaupun dia tak suka, dia kena membaca juga. Okay. Bila dia membaca, dia ada banyak ilmu di dada. Saya rasa, wow, hebat lah saya. Saya tahu banyak benda ni. Dan dia pada cakap, it comes in a package tau. Dia dipaksa baca, dia dipaksa faham, dia dipaksa bercakap, dia dipaksa berdebat, okay. Tapi dia tak terang dulu. Uh, and academic pursuit, it must come with menulis. Kelemahan saya dah saya menulis. Tak pandai menulis okay? Saya baca, saya pandai Penuh ilmu di dada Tapi supervisor saya cakap You ada problem ni You tak boleh nak menulis okay? Saya pun down Saya rasa mungkin saya tak payah buat PhD lah Macam ni susah ha? Sebab saya buat master by password Bila saya buat master by password Pergi kelas buat pembentangan dan sebagainya Bila tak buat PhD tu kan Tak pandai menulis So supervisor kata Ish boleh ke awak ni ha? Maka saya pun buat macam ni Tak apa Saya baca 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 saya baca, 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 saya faham, 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 saya bergaduh dengan supervisor saya Akhirnya saya tak boleh juga menulis okay. Sebab apa? Bila saya membaca, poin ni saya rasa, haa lah Poin ni seperti pernah aku lihat, tapi di mana ya? Siapa pernah melalui situasi ni sebelum ni? Sambil duduk baca artikel yang ke-15 ni Tak ingat dah artikel nombor satu cakap apa? Ingat, tapi tak ingat artikel mana dan sebagainya Sambil kita baca lagi sekali, jangankan cakap lima belah. Mungkin sepuluh pun tak ingat dah. Mungkin juga sebab kita takkan ada empat artikel. Takkan ada seratus uh, sepuluh artikel. Kita akan ada hundreds kan? Okay. Alright. So, bila saya dah sampai ke stage yang depressed. So, my supervisor said, Ani, apa kata you buat something? Okay. So, kebetulan dalam semester pertama saya buat PhD. Mungkin ada yang dah pernah dengar cerita saya ni. Semester pertama saya buat PhD. Bila semua saya upset dengan saya, saya rasa macam nak quit dah Ada bengkel FSTI Okay, pada tahun 2010 uh, Saya buat PhD dekat UITM Shah Alam uh, Bengkel tu dekat Seremban And saya kata hmm, Pilih sebelah bengkel ni sebab saya tahu Software ni untuk kualitatif Saya akan pergi interview pada semester ketiga Bila saya pergi, saya nak pergi, saya pergi, okay, pergi uh, <laughs> Trainer itu telah menggunakan data dalam bentuk surat kabar okay? Newspaper reports Untuk kita gunakan sebagai sampel data So I was stunned I was like, eh tak payah temu buat ke? Tak payah pembatian ke? Tak payah video image dan sebagainya Sebab itu ialah persepsi kita bahawa data kualitatif ini kena data prima Tapi kita lupa kena data sekunder pun boleh juga okay? Iaitu literature, report, document, policies What more, saya bidang undang-undang <coughs> Uh, peraturan, regulation, uh, law, cases dan sebagainya So, saya kata, wow, katakanlah Kalau misalnya peripot boleh digunakan Maybe saya boleh letak literature So, saya telah mencuba nasib eh. Saya letakkan dokumen soft copy saya Dalam bentuk literature tadi dalam FSTI What we did was coding Again, the terminologies used by your friend ni Menunjukkan kata mungkin dah pernah join bengkel uh, FSTI ataupun dah pernah Berjumpa dengan siapa-siapa yang dah pernah guna Essentially Kita buat benda yang sama Hard copy dokumen kita pegang dalam tangan kita Dan kita pakai highlighter Kalau kita rasa macam excited Kadang-kadang punya highlighter yang bunga tu kan Dia ada kelompok itu merah, pink, biru, hijau Semua color Highlight ikut tema Mungkin juga Ataupun kita pakai yuk kuning saja, Kuning, kuning, kuning Sebab kuning paling glamour Bila kita highlight kena kuning Kita akan tulis belah kanan If you read research methodology books, that exercise, we call it as 
tagging, labeling, or coding. Okay? In other words, it is identifying a section to be relevant and tagging it with a specific label name. Okay? Dalam metrics AI, terminologi yang digunakan adalah coding. Okay? Coding, labeling, ataupun tagging. Tapi kita pilih coding. So, kita buat apa? Kita baca, oh, okay. Komputer adalah satu alat untuk menyimpan maklumat. Maaf ini definisi. Saya akan highlight dia dan kodkan dengan definisi komputer. Are you following my example? Senang kan? Okay. Saya akan proceed benda yang sama. Baca point tu, apa lah penting saya akan tagkan dia. Penting lagi saya akan taggingkan dia. Kadang-kadang saya akan menggunakan nama kod yang baru. Kadang-kadang saya akan menggunakan kod yang sedia ada. Sebabnya saya dah dapat agak dah. Apa, apa definisi komputer? Okay. Tapi kadang-kadang benda itu mengejutkan. Dia kata, komputer ialah sesuatu alat yang datang daripada planet lain. Oh, okay, ini lain ni saya tak pernah. Okay. Contohnya, so at the end of the day, apa yang saya buat benda yang sama dengan hard copy dokumen juga. Okay. Hard copy saya akan highlight, highlight, highlight letak sebelah. My, uh, dokumen nombor 2 buat benda yang sama. Dokumen 3 buat benda yang sama. Sampai dokumen nombor 4. Dalam macam CI, saya buat benda yang sama. Saya kena baca dan saya kena taggingkan juga seperti mana. Uh, traditional document. Cuma beza dia bila saya buat dalam FCI, FCI akan ingat apa yang kita highlightkan, apa label name yang kita letak dan dia akan masuk ke dalam memori software itu. Apabila saya nak, maksudnya hari ni saya nak mulai sebenarnya definition. Saya cuma bagi arahan saja kepada FCI dan dia akan keluarkan something macam ni kepada saya. Ini adalah output daripada FCI. Output ini mengkompil ke semua yang saya dah pernah highlight kan daripada ke semua semua dokumen saya dan dia akan susun berdasarkan tema yang saya dah bagi awal-awal. Tema ni definition, dia bukan contohnya lah. Definition dia akan compile kan statement ni, statement ni dan statement ni duduk segrup. Problem duduk sekali, suggestion duduk sekali, initiatives by the government duduk sekali contohnya. Rasa macam mudah sikit dah nak menulis dengan adanya kompilasi apa yang kita dah highlightkan sebelum ni. Dengan menggunakan strategi dalam FCI ni, tidak akan ada lagi situasi seperti pernah aku lihat tapi di mana ya. You don't even need to remember. You just need to click the button. Okay. Now, button untuk nak output ni, kita boleh keluarkan dalam masa beberapa saat sahaja daripada FCI. Tapi of course kita kena baca dulu lah. Dia tak boleh lah. Ada 20 artikel tahu dalam FCI. Buat output tak boleh. Dia kena baca dulu. So, berdasarkan ini. Okay. Saya suka bagi example. Siapa di kalangan kita yang suka balik ke kampung. Untuk bercuti. Di hujung tahun ni ramai banyak orang bercuti kan. Cuti macam-macam lah. Cuti uh, hujung tahun lah. Tak habis ke cuti tahun. Uh, kalau tak cuti belajar. Okay. So, bercuti. Bawa sekali artikel kerja-kerja PhD semua Tinggal lah kata Tinggal lah kata tu tak sentuh pun Sebab kalau tak bawa, stres Kita fikir Tak berjabat ni kan Tapi kita bawa, tenang Jiwa, hati dan perasaan Tak sentuh pun tak apa Yang stresnya bila dah habis cuti tu balik kerja Allah, dua minggu ni membazir tak buat benda apa Tanya dah nak stres Okay Now, soalan saya, siapa di kalangan kita nak bawa artikel-artikel ini bersama kita atau nak bawa output ni bersama kita? Output eh? Sebab output tu is the carefully selected sections from your articles or from your data and it has been arranged accordingly based on the things that you have determined earlier. Betul? Betul? Adakah ni tujuan you all expect untuk nak dengar daripada ceramah saya? Atau masa ni menyesal lah. Nak keluar makan lah. Contohnya. Okay, tunggu dulu, tunggu dulu. Okay. Alright. So, hasil daripada apa yang saya cerita tadi, saya pun nak memberikan 30 saat untuk tengok gambar ni dan bagi tahu saya apa yang anda semua nampak. 30 saat. Start counting from now. Lagi lima belas saat. Alright. Tiga belas saat dah berakhir. Siapa yang nak 
volunteer untuk bagi tahu saya. Wish, okay, tak ada boleh nak habiskan ayat saya. Okay, silakan. What do you see in this photo? tetapi perlu sabar istiqamah so this is more, uh, dari segi visualization visualize is my prediction thank you doctor ok belum sempat saya tanya soalan uh, sebab dia kata dia tengok gambar ni tapi nampak macam ini adalah satu perjalanan PhD belum sempat saya tanya why do you say that dia tu explain nampak ranjau duri dan sebagainya dia boleh pergi kau dan sebagainya pun layak untuk menerima dia juga let me get one from the lady ok sila uh, berdiri dan kuat kuat sikit Kenapa kata macam tu? Kenapa kata macam tu? 
kruide, ga sien kualitatief met stiewa suksesse, I do kusie pula nie, dat die kusie pula nie kunne justify, okay? You have a finding or conclusion, you have to justify that conclusion. Dia tidak boleh, sy rasa sebab sy nampak tren nie, sy nampak tren, tak boleh. Dia kena tren tu berjalan kerana, okay? So, uh, apakah dapatan kajian kualitatif? Dapatannya ialah ada tiga, uh, faktor yang telah menyebabkan penggunaan komputer dekat dalam kelas Kenapa? So you have to say lah kenapa apa tiga faktor tu Justify balik your uh, participant cakap kenapa dan sebagainya Very quickly Semua ada, uh, semua ada slide ni kan? Okay boleh baca sendiri okay. Lanjut sekali Qualitative research is an inquiry approach okay, In which the inquirer Ini bukan uh, definisi saya Ini adalah daripada Creswell okay. Can I do it Creswell? Bukan jiran saya Okay Okay Explores a central phenomena Kita tak payah Cuba un You don't need to move a mountain Kita tak perlu untuk nak kaji World peace contohnya Kita nak tengok satu komponen sahaja Okay Central phenomena kerana kajian kualitatif ni Dia tidak banyak Tapi dia mendalam It's not like this But it goes down Okay Ask participants broad and general questions Kita Penyelidik akan bertanya soalan-soalan yang terbuka Broad and general question Kita tidak akan tanya soalan-soalan tertutup Siapa boleh bagi tahu saya kenapa Penyelidik kualitatif bertanyakan soalan yang terbuka Dan bukan soalan yang tertutup Tahu tak beza soalan terbuka dan tertutup Soalan terbuka, apakah terbuka? Soalan tertutup, apakah tertutup? Okay. Beza soalan terbuka dan tertutup Maybe you can share with your friends Supaya kita boleh berkongsi ilmu yang ada Uh, dapat a genuine answer and then uh, at the end of the day kita buat team coding lah sebab benda tu membuka pemikiran mereka kita, uh, close ended ni kita dah fix uh, mereka tak ada pilihan yes no can so tak banyak uh, are you a researcher uh, i'm a lecturer lecturer okay uh, tidak mengikuti sebarang program pengajian master atau PhD tidak ada okay sedang uh, so uh, buat PhD uh, sedang buat PhD dekat mana? Uh, saya pernah buat tapi yang last ni tak tercapai lah okay. Yang last ni di UTEM UTEM Ini mesti Kita mau pengajian? Saya bagian uh, leadership in politics Suka tak bidang pengajian leadership dan politik? Sebab saya suka cakap pasal politik selalu Selalu tengok TV pasal politik? Uh, saya penganalisis politik juga Ah, ok Soalan saya kepada kawan kita Dah tersenarai Soalan saya yang pertama tu Dia bergantung kepada so jawapan yang sebelumnya Belajar dekat mana? Bidang apa? Bila dia jawab soalan politik Baru saya tanya pula soalan bidang politik pula Semi structured questions untuk soalan yang terbuka Kalau saya kata suka ke tak? Lepas tu makan suka makan apa dan sebagainya So dia ialah soalan yang tertutup Ini ialah soalan yang terbuka Belajar dekat mana? Uh, kenapa dan sebagainya Okey, baik terima kasih Pun layak mendapat uh, hadiah juga Okey Okey boleh pergi kat bawah kan Kecil anak kena turun bawah Okey <laughs> Exercise, exercise Okey, alright Terima kasih Saya rasa sepayah dah pergi ceramah ni Lekta Syairi Saya pergi balik dah ni Semua orang tahu dah jawapan So let's detail views of participants Sebab apabila dah bertanya soalan yang terbuka kita akan dapat banyak jawapan Soalan-soalan okay? soalan, soalan jawapan yang general Dan bila dah dapat baru kita akan analyze You see, the definition of qualitative from Creswell ialah Stages untuk qualitative research okay? Pilih tajuk, bertanya soalan Dah dapat data dalam pelbagai format Baru kita balik untuk analyze dan kod Berikan interpretasi dan tulis laporan okay? Jom, uh, stages yang telah dinyatakan di Creswell ni sebenarnya Dia telah mendefine that qualitative research okay? Bagaimana merangka? Mulakan dengan tajuk Diikuti dengan persoalan kajian dan objektif Tentukan design Kaedah pengumpulan data Pergi collect data Balik dah ada data nak bagaimana nak analyze Kemudian kita akan sediakan laporan Design How do you know? Bagaimana kita nak tahu design yang sesuai untuk kita? Naratif, fenomenologi, etnografik, kajian kes dan projek diri Berapa ramai di kalangan kita buat naratif? Tak ada okay. Berapa ramai buat fenomenologi? 
seorang etnografik apa semua buat benda apa kajian kes uh, ok ramai grounded theory yang lain yang tak angkat tangan bersama baru daftar kemarin tak ada bincang lagi dengan supervisor nak buat desain apa dan sebagainya contohnya ok so bagaimana kita nak tahu kita tengok kepada fokus what is it you're trying to achieve Bagaimana kita nak tahu desain kajian sesuai lima kajian, lima desain kualitatif yang very common dekat dalam uh, kajian kualitatif, okay? Naratif, sekiranya kita nak menceritakan sesuatu, you want to explore the life of an individual, okay? Phenomenology, you want to understand the essence of experience, maksudnya kita ada satu fenomena, kita nak kaji beberapa aspek berkaitan dengan fenomena ni. Grounded theory, saya ada satu idea uh, idea berkaitan dengan satu isu Tapi saya belum tahu dia punya outcome tu macam mana So saya nak hasilkan outcome dia What you want to do is you want to come up with theory or theoretical model So you actually develop theory from grounded from the data in the field So kita pergi collect data dulu, balik baru kita tahu Apa lah dapat tadi macam ni, macam ni Ethnographic, lebih kepada memahami situasi atau mendeskripkan sesuatu kumpulan kelas atau berkultural social group okay? Dan case tadi lebih kepada sampling yang kita pilih iaitu untuk case Developing an in-depth analysis, one case or many cases okay? Pun dia ada pembahagian-pembahagian lagi Now, fokus kita akan menentukan apakah desain kajian yang kita nak Jom kita reflect sekejap dalam setiap saat Research kita ni macam mana? Yang mana satu yang sesuai? What is it that I'm trying to achieve? Adakah saya cuba nak cerita? Autobiography of the former Prime Minister Tun Mahathir who is now the Prime Minister again. Okay? So, kita akan pergi buat data collection, kita akan buat analysis, kemudian kita akan menceritakan dalam report kita dalam bentuk detail pictures of an individual penceritaan. You're going to tell a story zaman kanak-kanak uh, Tun Kemudian zaman sekolah, zaman universiti, zaman perkhidmatan dia dan sebagainya Phenomenology okay? Kita ni sedang mengkaji kes pembangunan bayi dekat uh, Uganda Sorry, ada orang Uganda ke dalam Tanya je example for academic discussion okay? Kes pembangunan bayi So, apa, mas, apa yang kita nak tahu mengenai fenomena ni? Apakah faktor? Apakah trend? Apakah cadangan untuk nak mengatasi dia? Okay. So, faktor pula dia ada anak-anak lagi Faktor pertama, background family dia Faktor kedua, kesempatan hidup Faktor ketiga, faktor keempat dan sebagainya Okay, it's like branches going up Mind map Ada idea-idea dia Idea-idea lagi peluk-peluk-peluk dan sebagainya Okay, you want to understand the detail So, you will conduct long interviews You analyze the statement the meaning So, dalam laporan kita akan mendeskripkan essence tu Faktor A, faktor B, faktor C Trend A, trend B, trend C Cadangan uh, penambahbaikan uh, ABC kita punya Grounded theory, okay. kita come up with a theory of model Ethnographic, siapa pun nak tengok cerita Cannibal Holocaust Tak pernah dengar, ada yang angkat tangan okay. Cannibal Holocaust adalah mereka-mereka yang agak berusia Seperti saya okay. Sebab kalau uh, uh, dalam cerita ni Seorang, uh, a group of students from the university went with their professor to an island inhabited by man eating population ok pernah tengok atau pernah come across atau terbaca at the end of the story so kenapa uh, saya cuba bagi example tu ialah they, uh, these people they cannot go and interview sahaja sekali bertanyakan apa perasaan awak ketika makan orang dekat ni apa yang awak buat persediaan sebelum makan orang selepas makan orang macam mana okay. sebab primarily observation and interviews with additional artifacts extended time in the field researcher ni dia kena engage dengan community tersebut untuk nak memahami dengan lebih lanjut okay? so they have to go and stay with these people mereka ni this group at the end of the story everybody got eaten Except for one student who need to tell Dia lain cerita-cerita tu Tapi dia tak tahu betul betul kan Sebab tak ada collaboration Okay, anyway Ni ialah Kaedah untuk ethnographic Dan case study ialah kita akan menceritakan no. Stages eh Yang pertama Kita pilih kualitatif Yang kedua Pilih design Yang ketiga baru kita buat uh, 
uh, interview data collection dan sebagainya. Okey. Alright. Apabila dah sampai pergi collect data dan sebagainya, maka kita akan balik. Dah ada data di tangan. What is it that we want to do? Kita kena analyze. Boleh atau tidak kita tak analyze data? Tak ada stage yang nak analyze ni kan? Okey. Proses memahami data. Data analysis, research methodology books define it as the process of making sense of your data. Okey. So apa dia? Macam payah je untuk dia lihat dia nak sebut okay. Sebelah kiri ada data asal Inilah dia data-data interview transcript, observation, document, literature Yang kita asalnya data asal raw data Kita nak convert raw data ini ke dalam format interpretative text Which is our report okay. So you want to convert this into this okay. I just realised we have international participants in the classroom Can you understand Bahasa Malaysia? Would you prefer me to continue in Arabic? Okay? Will you be okay if I continue in Arabic? Assalamualaikum. <laughs> okay, so what you want to do is you want to come to, uh, They will not know where I come from, okay? Because of my Germany language. Okay. <laughs> so, data asal, you want to change this format of raw data into the interpretative text. So what is it that you do? You're going to do a lot of things. You're going to describe, you're going to interpret, and then you're going to analyze. So, two ways of approaching our data. Number one is inductive coding. Have you ever heard of this before? Deductive coding is the other way around. Okay? Inductive coding is when you have the data in your hand, but you do not know what are your findings yet. So you will reduce your data into that specific code names and themes. Okay? You read first, you highlight, you give the label name. You read, you give the label name. At the end of the day, you will group together the codes in order to uh, know what are the themes. Number two, the arrow is on the other way around. It's from the right hand side. Okay? Start with the themes. I know what is it I'm looking for. So, you will actually go through the data to find the evidence. Kita akan bermula dengan dapatan terlebih dahulu. Kesimpulan dia, 1, 2, 3, 4. Apakah bukti yang kita, 1, 2, 3, 4 ni, kita kena baca data kita baru kita akan faham. Okay? Dapat, uh, you can find the statements talking about them. So, sejarah hanya lah. Since 2010, I have learned uh, FSCI during my PhD days. And then I realized that it's not, knowledge is not mine, okay? I better spread it with my friends, with everybody, until today that I am here. It started off me at Faculty of Law of UITM Shahalam. My supervisor asked me to teach my friends, which I did at the Faculty of Law of UITM Shahalam. And my friends told their friends from other faculties at UITM Shahalam. So other faculty started to invite me and then the friends of the friends tell their friends from other universities. So other universities started to invite me until when I returned back to UUM, I'm serving UUM by the way, um, uh, people still invite me. And then I said, I cannot do this on my own. I work together with MPWS since 2013. They will coordinate my courses. At Uh, MPWS, I teach two courses. I think the introduction has been given earlier. One is qualitative analysis with the FCI. Okay? You have qualitative data, how to analyze it using the software. Number two, literature review using FCI. Okay? So, if you learn, if you know, if you have a lot of, uh, you have to, uh, you have to undergo literature review okay? process. So, you will actually um, uh, Uh, find systematic ways on how to do it. Okay, so we teach during that session both uh, each a one day course. Okay, one day for literature review, one day for quantitative analysis with FSCI. So what does the software do? Okay, the software is uh, you can read on your own the, the development starting from 1999, and then the latest version that we are working on today, and I'm showcasing to you is FSCI eight. Okay, version. Uh, we have both Windows and Mac, but today I'm showcasing Windows only because um, majority of religions we use Windows. However, if you do join the workshop, for example, because it's a one-day 
workshop again now it's one hour only one day workshop we will work on your own computer okay and on your own data set okay? we will not give sample data why because i want you to work on a data which is close to your heart on a topic close to your heart and the coding system also a topic which is close to your heart so that later on when you go home you can still we use that coding set okay three stages Apakah yang kita buat apabila kita nak mereview literature ataupun kita nak menganalisis data? Tiga stage sahaja. You will realize that these three stages are the same stages even if you do it traditionally. Traditionally, what do you do? You prepare the data for analysis. Stage two, you read through the data. Stage three, you will generate reports. Okay, ataupun kita nak menulis na review ataupun dapat tanya. In accuracy, it's also the same. You will prepare the data for the analysis, you will analyze your data, and then you will prepare the report. Very similar. Okay? So, I'm going to walk you through these stages. So, saya pun memikir, apakah tajuk yang sesuai untuk saya nak tunjuk? Sebelum-sebelum ni, sebab saya akan pilih tajuk-tajuk yang uh, very recent ni. Eh? Contoh Jerebu, uh, Piala Thomas, uh, but now, I don't know what is the current issue that I'm supposed to be um, uh, explaining. So I just go one year back, okay? And the topic that I want to showcase to you is uh, interface of fantasy. You can see it, okay? And the sample data is talking about these are newspaper reports, okay? Black shoes. This is from Afghan Malaysia Kini But unfortunately the sample data is in Malay Because I normally uh, present in Malay during uh, seminars okay? And then Asra Wani Makai Kasu Itam okay? So I'm going to engage phenomenology lah Why? Because the certain phenomena is Compulsion by the government of Malaysia Starting 2021 okay? For school students to use black shoes to go to school okay? Apart from that, I also have one Facebook post here, okay? Malaysia Kini Facebook. Uh, and then we want to analyze what the comments are saying. Are they agreeable? Whatever the comments, okay? So, what I want to achieve by this example or sample data is I want to know what are the factors the government introduced such policy. Number two, what are the problems faced by the parents, okay? And number three, the planning by the government. Lah. Maybe planning dulu, and then factor, and then um, uh, that one, uh, the response from the parents, okay? Now, those are the three themes that I want to find in this data, okay? So, now I'm going to tell FSTI, not by speaking, by clicking up, okay? The three things that I want to find in at, uh, in this four data, okay? So I'm going to go to <coughs> home, so new entities, new codes, C-O-D-E. So, um, because it's very small, I think I'm going to change the resolution of the screen to make it very small. Here 
and in each step we have different rivers. I see on home, this menu, I see on search project, another menu, for example. On your left hand side is the explorer bar. Okay? File explorer, eh? Windows Explorer yang biasa kita buka, kita klik saja dia akan keluar item dekat belakang dia lah. Okay? Uh, dan dia ada macam-macam item. The first one is documents, okay? Document 1, 2, 3, 4. The codes that I have created just now, factors, government plan, response, okay? Memo networks, kita takkan tengok semualah. Tapi at least, kita akan cuba untuk um, go through one by one, okay? And then, this is the largest section you will see on your screen. The larger section of the two, okay, the one, two, the first one is your data. Atau literature, atau document, atau policy, atau gambar, atau video, atau audio, okay. Any type of data, it will appear over here. The smaller section on your screen, we call it as margin. The margin is where all your code names and, um, and memos will appear, okay. Sama juga, if you're holding a hard copy document, Highlight tulis belah kanan, highlight tulis belah kanan, sama juga. Highlight here tulis belah sini, highlight sini tulis dekat sini. Example, okay? So, uh, first thing first, what is good to know is once you see all your list of documents here and all your things that you want to find in your data uh, here, it's as easy as <coughs> drag and drop only. Okay, drag and drop. In other words, I'm just going to open document number one. It talks about kasut dan stokin hitam wajib. Okay, so here it talks about a certain circular from the government. This is the planning by the government. So I've already highlighted this section. And by highlighting, I know this is talking about the government planning. I will highlight first, and I'm going to bring government plan drop on drag and drop onto the highlighted section like this. Very easy, simple. Once I do that, two things will appear. The first one, there is a bar over here. It's called the quotation bar. Quotation bar ini akan mengikut bilangan yang kita, bilangan line yang kita highlight. Perkara yang kedua, eh silap, tiga perkara. Perkara pertama ada bar. Perkara yang kedua, akan ada dekat sini. Okay, code name untuk label ini. Atau, atau research methodology kita akan panggil, this selection has already been tagged or labeled with government plan. Perkara ketiga yang berlaku, under government plan code, there is already one groundedness, meaning ada nombor satu, to show there is one statement that I have highlighted with government plan. Siapa kata, seperti pernah kulihat tapi di mana, sekarang dah tak payah ingat dah. Sebab FSTI akan mengingat untuk kita. Okay, now moving on. Okay. Dalam tempo transisi, pihak sekolah diminta untuk okay, um, majoriti ibu bapa bersetuju dengan pemakaian kasut hitam. Seperti dia kan, dia kata okay, majoriti responden termasuk ibu bapa bersetuju dengan pemakaian kasut kumi hitam. Okay, so this is response from parent. So saya akan letak kat sini. Okay, tengok balik. Tak ada satu. Satu government plan, satu response from parent. So, kita pergi kepada nombor dua. Akhbar berita harian. Ah, very small. Sakit sikit. Okay. Okay, pelaksanaan kasut hitam. Government plan. Sama. Government plan juga. Tapi dekat sini dia akan terus tunjuk dua. Dia it will continue to build up because you will continue to read. You will continue to label. You will continue to quote, for example. So, you just build up. Okay. Apa lagi dia cakap kat sini Susulan keluhan daripada ibu bapa Yang mengatakan Okay so is Ini ialah Response from parent Langkah itu menceriakan pelajar Terutama dalam menjalankan aktiviti Luar kira darjah Okay so I will just highlight this Because this is konon-konon factor okay. Factor to do that for the four documents. Okay? Nampak tak betapa senangnya apabila kita dah ada dokumen dan kita dah ada code dekat sebelah uh, kiri dan seterusnya ialah Ashraf Wani very quickly. Okay? Again, ayat pertama definitely is the government planning. Okay? Uh, 
but it's ready for the Again, government plan. That's it. Akhir sekali adalah Facebook. Eh. Kita boleh buat social media analysis juga daripada uh, sebab saya rasakan dekat dalam bentuk PDF kat sini sebarang statement dan again saya akan cari saja poin-poin yang kata ni uh, it's not happy kan? It's not happy. Good statement so I'm not going to say response parents. Uh, okay. Apa yang saya dah buat sekarang? What is it that I have done here is I have identified relevant sections from the data and labeled it accordingly with a specific label name that I want to give it. For example, response from the parent. Here is response from the parent has been reflected here. Okay? So, hasil daripada apa yang saya buat pada hari ini ialah sebenarnya saya um, apa? memilihkan poin-poin yang penting lah dekat sini. Over such number of days that I have been working on this, more and more will uh, come out. Okay, so hasil daripada apa yang saya buat, saya boleh tampilkan kandia dalam pelbagai format. Okay, the first format that I want to talk about is um, uh, mind mapping format. Okay, for example, government plan, saya akan right click dia dan saya akan pilih open network. Okay. In other words, okay, government plan, kita akan skip. What are the government plans? Setengah orang, dia suka melihat sesuatu dalam bentuk visual. Dia tak mahu tengok benda dekat dalam bentuk textual. Okay? Textual means perkataan government, statement, statement, statement. Tapi sekarang visual means central idea, branches going out, further branches going out. Okay? For example, so dekat government plan, bila saya nak menulis eh, berkaitan dengan apakah Perancangan kerajaan. What are the government plans with regards to school children wearing black shoes? Going to school, okay? So what I, uh, here, I will just generate that and call back everything that I have highlighted before, okay? To come up here. So I will just give, um, uh, go up down maybe? Okay, so it can just be, it will call back every statement that I have highlighted. If it is in image format, also can. If it is in, um, in textual format, okay, also can. So here it says it comes from document number one. This is the statement. Document number two, this is the statement. Document number four and document number four, none from document number three, okay. For example, of course, uh, I do not showcase here the cosmetics of changing color and everything. I just show you the idea where to use it and uh, from the layout, also you can change. Uh, whatever layout that you want uh, after that. Output yang kedua. Okay? Output yang pertama ialah uh, dalam bentuk gambar raja. Output yang kedua dalam bentuk okay, sinar ikut. Uh, let's take response kali ni. Okay. Uh, response uh, select report saya akan ambil selected items saja atau saya nak all items pun boleh dalam situasi ini. Okay, quotation, content dan create report. Dalam masa beberapa saat, sistem akan terus generatekan uh, untuk kita point yang kita nak. Semua yang kita dah highlightkan untuk pokok tadi. Okay, seperti ini. Kasut hitam ke sekolah created by me. Okay, uh, quote report. Factor, satu saja faktor yang keluar. Bayangkan kalau nama dokumen ni Kita save dia dalam format author year Author year Ani Munirah 2010 says this Zul 2011 says that Siti 2019 says this Okay for example If we put the name smart enough To put it author year So that's how it's going to be So if you put Akbar So it's going to come up Akbar lah If you put the title of the document It's going to come up title of the document Okay faktor apa dia So All these are generated very quickly. Compilation of everything that we have highlighted 
from all of the documents. Okay? Not only that, okay, apart from that, I can also get at the CI to showcase for me the, what are the government plans, okay? not only in textual format like that, but in cloud format. Okay? For example, like this. Okay? I'm just going to make it very small. Factors. Okay? For example, government response. So it would just show me kan word cloud Word cloud ialah Apakah perkataan yang banyak disebut The bigger it is More Frequency for that word So I'm just going to bring my cursor To the word kasut Kasut is mentioned 8 times From these words So what I go for factors Perkataan factors sikit saja. Okay just to show you That's the only thing that we can get Katanya dalam bilik berupaya So these are the words Because only one statement right So I'm going to go What are the government plans? Oh wow Okay Kasut akan bermula pemakaian These are the things that I have highlighted And response Differently Okay Alright Kasut sekolah ibu bapa berwarna warni Perbandingan murid tak putih dan sebagainya lah Okay alright so, what can you see the potential of using this for your qualitative analysis? The word cloud, I mean. Okay. So we have identified certain statements from the interview participants talking about um, what are the factors of uh, baby dumping, pembangunan bayi. Okay. So these are the statements. So you showcase in the form of. Um, a word cloud like this, it will identify what other words that you have uh, highlighted before. There was one time that we were conducting research for uh, perception from UUM staff, okay? And that was, how, why do you like working at UUM? Okay, that was the question. So when people answer such questions, they don't answer in complete sentence. For example, I like working at UUM because, no, they don't answer it like that. They will say, the environment, the scenery, the teamwork, uh, the, the office space, for example. So from those words, we generate a word cloud from the hundreds of responses from the staff and we found out, oh, these are the generally the main things that are uh, liked by the uh, participants, by the uh, respondents. Okay. What is it that I want to show some more? Okay, these are the things that I will be sharing uh, in the workshop. Segmenting, word crunch and word cloud, okay. Deductive, ah, auto code, I forgot to mention to do that. I wish to showcase to you uh, one another feature of coding apart from deductive and inductive is auto coding. So I will simply open one particular document, okay. Um, kasut. I want to find the word kasut. And everybody is familiar with control F. Control F is to find. Or command F if you're using MacBook. Okay? If you open a PDF document, you will find uh, you can do control F, put a certain keyword and then next, next, next. So it will show you the next step. Next. Now in FTC you can also do that, control F. But I recommend you using autocoding instead of control F. Autocoding means to find and to code. In other words, I want FTCI to find a specific keyword. Once found, I want FTCI to code that statement. Okay? Not only I don't want FTCI to code that word, I want FTCI to code the sentence containing that keyword. Okay? That sounds much better. Why? Because I want FTCI to find the word kasut. And to highlight the entire sentence containing the word kasut, and to code it with the code name Kasut. Are you following my example? Serangan. Okay. So, why in the world do we want to do this? Okay. Generally because when we have an article in front of us or an entire transcript of the interview in front of us, we want to know a specific keyword. Traditionally, what do you do? Pegang document depan kita. Zim, zim, zim. Ah, ah. Zim, zim, zim. Pinpoint sendiri kan? Secara manual. Tapi dalam FTC saya nak FTC pinpointkan secara automatik, okay, kepada saya. So I know the word kasut is mentioned many times here, okay. So what I do, I will open on auto coding and search for the term kasut, okay. Ignore
small case, of course I don't mind if it's small letters or capital letters. And then I'm going to expand two sentences. And that quote that I want to give is Kasut. Kasut. So this is how it goes. I wanted to say, define for me the word kasut. And to highlight the entire sentence containing the word kasut. And to finally code, it, code that sentence with the code name kasut. Okay? Now, this is a very magical button. That button is confirm matches. Confirm matches means... Confirm matches. <laughs> confirm matches means, please confirm with me first before you hide you code it okay i don't want you to highlight it automatically 100 set, state sentences because you could be highlighting the header the footer the title the designation of a person the journal name at the end for example journal kasut contohnya i don't want that i only want statements that are meaningful so please confirm with me each time so i always advise my course participants to code a uh, tick tick or check mark at confirm matches that's it that's the instructions. So I click start. And the sentence will bring me to the first sentence containing the word kasut, which is a header of that document. Alhamdulillah, I have confirm matches. If not, that would have been highlighted already. Okay, so I will now skip it because I don't want it. Okay, and then footer. Okay, and then the statement. Aha, uh -huh, this sounds like important. I'm going to code it. If I code it, see? I can say I code it with the word kasut and brings me to the next one. And then I find this statement. Okay, this is now highlighted. This statement. Ah, also important. Code it. Code it. If I don't want it, I will skip it. Code it. Code it. Can you see what is happening? You now no longer have to use your superpower eyes in order to take a look at the document and uh, uh, pinpoint which location. Because now as I see, I will pinpoint for you. But of course, this can only be done on a textual document. You cannot do autocoding on video, on audio, on images, or a secured PDF, unfortunately. Okay? Some documents, PDF documents are secured, so we cannot uh, do this uh, uh, exercise, okay? because it's autocoding, it finds the specific keyword. Okay? Or if I don't confirm matches, see, I uncheck confirm matches and I say code it. The system will automatically code it without me asking it. Okay? So now let's take a look at Kasut. Eight. There are eight statements containing the word Kasut in my entire document. How long does it take you to read eight statements in your long document? Definitely not a few minutes like I did that. Okay? But again, you have to read. Huh? Reading is don't simply accept uncheck the confirm matches. You have to confirm matches each time okay, in order to um, show that. Okay, what else? What are we saying? Uh, memos, we can create memos as well. Visual output, textual output, and numerical output is very detailed. I will be sharing this in um, a, a longer platform apart from today. So what else I want to show you is okay, <clears throat> the version that I have showcased to you today is SSTI desktop. Okay? Desktop, meaning Windows and Mac. Walaupun saya menggunakan Macbook, okay, ini Macbook saya, tapi saya ada juga Windows dekat dalam ni. Um, the most complete version of SSTI is SSTI Windows and Mac, the desktop version. However, we also have mobile version. Mobile means you have an iPad 2 or above or Android tablet, okay, you can install SSDI, the light version, L-I-T-E version, um, it has limited functions. So from there, you can create documents, create project, add documents, do coding. So instead of uh, having to open your laptop in front of the computer or while cooking, now you can cook while holding the iPad in front of you. Cooking, cooking, highlight, highlight on the tablet, for example. Okay, for the future review all the time. In front, sitting in front of the TV with your children watching television, open the iPad and do for example. For example, okay, mobile. The projects that you have created mobile, you can export it and import into FSTI desktop version. So our website is www.fsti.com. Okay, I highly encourage you to 
uh, come to the website. Apart from that, we also have the accuracy and cloud. So the versions that I have explained earlier, uh, they are device specific. Installed onto that computer is on that computer. Installed onto that tablet is on that tablet. But cloud is so now you have internet connection, then you can use accuracy and cloud. Okay, cloud.accuracy.com. At the moment, they are not they are not charging yet. Okay, I highly encourage you to create a free account at cloud.accuracy.com. Soon they will charge. Okay, so uh, while they are not charging it yet, we better get on board okay, in order to uh, become a member okay, of Fantasy and Club. Uh, they have not determined the pricing yet, but I know they are developing more information. You can add PDFs, you can add textual documents inside here. And the best part is because it's online, not device specific, you can have share the project with somebody else. Okay? For example, co-researchers in the project, maybe you have pro uh, research projects, everybody can access that uh, and it will come up. Adi Munirah coded this, okay? Uh, Muhammad coded this, Zaki coded that, for example, okay? So it will show you uh, teamwork in Atasi and Cloud. Please uh, sign up. And I think that's it. That is what I want to share. I have just finished it, okay? Uh, Jom bertemu dalam bengkel yang akan datang. Okay, this is one of the workshops, one of the many workshops. So if you see the shadow that has been uh, provided for you. It is one month I do qualitative, the other month I will do uh, literature review, the other one is qualitative, uh, interchangeably, not interchangeably, one after the other. Okay, so of course, no compulsion, but I just want to share you how many times that we have conducted training at FWS is since 2013. Okay, right, so this is one of it. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to open a QA session. If there's no QA session, it's even better. Question? Yes. Can you say it out loud, please? Uh, 
famous question I get is, I have a lot of documents inside of my Mendeley. Can I open these documents inside of FSCI? How do I put these documents into FSCI? Okay? Yes, you can. By one function in FSCI, we call it as reference manager import, import export, reference manager over here. Okay? Import export, reference manager. When I click on reference manager, it will allow me to find files in the format of XML from EndNote, okay, or from Mendeley. Uh, Mendeley can also create documents in XML format. Now, these references from Mendeley or EndNote, we can generate XML files, export these documents as XML files. I'm sure I have a few minutes just to showcase it uh, to you. I will just go to Mendeley desktop. I skip inside of uh, my FSCI presentation just now okay. is it can help us to group the documents like putting it in a specific folders okay but when we have from Mendeley for example okay. good so now I'm just gonna change it to Example, these are my example documents. How do I know these documents have full text or not? It's from here. Okay? It has full text. And just for uh, demonstration purposes, I will click two documents from uh, PMC Public Health and two documents from 2016 Spring of Class and 2015 Spring Class, okay, for example. Here, I have highlighted two documents, PMC Public Health, and two documents from Spring of Plus. At the same time, I also created, highlighted two documents, two from 2016 and two from 2015. Okay? Exporting is easy. I will simply click export. The format of that must be XML onto my desktop. Okay? So here at the desktop, I already have my XML file. Okay? That XML file import it into FSCI like this. Desktop. Okay. Perhaps try. Okay. Here I can also get FSCI to rename my my articles into the format of author year in bracket dash the title of the document okay or if i don't want it to be too long i can just uncheck this and it will be only the title the default name is title but i want the author year as well because in the output just now you see the uh, output it shows author year say what author year say what import originally i have four documents one two three four supporting documents now I have five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now each of these documents, they have been arranged accordingly. I'll just open Document Manager. Four documents, the earlier ones. Now it has also document five, six, seven, eight. Plus it has arranged for me the documents into specific years, specific groups. Okay. These groups are from the information in the Mendeley. Year 2015, these are the two documents. Year 2016, BMC Public Health and Spring of Class as well. Okay. So what do you do from here? We will read the document from the ones that you have imported from Mendeley. Anything that you have imported, it will be added up here. RM imported. You add another four, after this is going to be eight. You add another two, it's going to be ten. Okay, so it will just add up. Does that answer your question? So what do you do later on? Read and based on the specific codes, if you want to read the specific codes. I think I have time only for one last question. Somewhere from behind. Yes. Quite, quite skip. Last, last question, last question. Uh, so, uh, when you have uh, expanded, why does it want to read? So, how does the result look like? For instance, uh, the finding. Uh, which one you want to highlight first? And uh, uh, 
because which method is it? I don't have idea. And then and another question is my my uh, friend is uh, talking. He's talking about how to analyze uh, qualitative. Um, he said that bila you interview informant, you kena cari team yang uh, sama baru you stop. Which is I disagree with that statement. Let's say my my uh, uh, keywords is rhetorical communication. Ada enam informant. So, uh, dalam enam tu, uh, tim dia berbeza. So, kenapa perlu tunggu sampai tim tu sama, sampai bila nak habis? So, that doctor said, you mesti buat kualitatif ni, bila you interview, uh, tim bila uh, kebanyakan informan jawab benda yang sama, then you stop. Now, uh, you as an expert, please answer this. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Thank you very much. For these both questions, they do not relate to FSCI, but I will just uh, explain it anyway. Uh, number one is if we are using mix between quantity and quantity, which one do we want to highlight first? No definite answers because it depends on our research question and objective. So what is your research question? If your research question, sometimes that research question, you have four research questions, two is quantitative, two is qualitative. This is mixed uh, quantity and quantity as well, but there is no issue as to which one do you want to highlight first. Now, that question, I believe, is referring to, you have four research questions. Each of these four research questions, the methodology is both quality and quantity. In order to answer the first research question, you have quality and quantity, quality and quantity as well. But again, it goes back to what is it that you want to explain? Do you want to get the categorization of the answer? Normally, you will be highlighting the quantity first. In order to elaborate further on the quantitative findings, interviews was conducted to further explain because in quantity very often it is not explanatory you cannot ask open-ended question so when you ask close-ended question you will have the categorization like percentage like the uh, certain numbers in order to indicate the answer but for qualitative in order for you to understand further why 50 70 percent agree with this statement why 30 percent disagree so you have to ask them further from the interviews, we understand further, okay? But sometimes, people also highlight qualitative first because they want to find the idea for them to carry out the quantitative section. Qualitative, in order to probe or explore the certain variables that you want to examine in the quantitative section. So my answer, no definite answer for that particular question. It goes back to what is it you want to prove. Do you want to prove the categorization? then it will be quantitative first. But to explain further, then it, you will explain the qualitative section. For the second question, oh, okay. For the second question about you interview such number of people, then only you stop if there is a, not until there is a specific thing. But the answer is until there is a specific consistency in that particular thing. But that does not apply in all situations. I will say that only applies in grounded theory format or inductive way of uh, investigation. Why? Because if you do case study, that case study has already, already a limited number of people that you are investigating, but there is no consistency. Still, you have to report. You cannot go outside the boundary of that case because that's your unit of analysis. Why grounded theory is very often people using that is you have a specific point we call a point of saturation. That is mentioned in one of the slides for the design. Okay. Very quickly, secretary, sorry. Here. Interviews with 20 to 30 individual, individuals to saturate categories and detail out a theory. So because you do not know what is the theory or the model that you want to come up with, so you have to interview such number of people until you can prove there is consistency in the answer, which is point of saturation. Even if you interview the 10th person, you already get the same answer. So no point you go and interview more people to get the same answer. If what you already have is sufficient for you to answer that question, you stop. Okay. For that particular question, I, I believe your friend is referring to grounded theory and when to stop is when you have achieved the point of saturation. I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much, everyone. I would like to apologize for any shortcomings on my part. I hope I've explained and carried out my job uh, well. Any questions of this, uh, we can uh, discuss. And thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Terima kasih kepada Dr. Ani Munira atas perkongsian ilmu sebentar tadi. Semoga semua peserta dapat memanfaatkan ilmu yang diperolehi.